Uh, the problem I have with the church is that the church is not growing. Since I was young, it has been the same fasting when the year begins till today. If I go back to my church, which raised me, every year begins with 10 days of fasting. It's the same words in prayer. Is the same routine of not eating. Everything is the same. That makes it a religion. Because being religious simply means you are controlling God through a system. Or you are serving God in a systematic way. We are saying you get up in the morning and you say, God bless my day in Jesus' name. Angels be with me. Amen. And then when you're about to eat, you say, God bless our food in Jesus' name. Amen. When you're sleeping at night, angels on my pillow, angels on my ground, angels on the roof, cover me under the blood of Jesus. Amen. Every day you say the same words. Every day. When you're worshiping, Father, you are holy. Father, you are worthy. Tomorrow, worship, Father, you are holy. Father, you are worthy. In the afternoon, Father, you are worthy. Father, you are holy. At night, you are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning. And every day, every day, God bless you for your offerings. Sophia bless you. Latasha bless you. Uh, it, it's so confusing to me growing up. That's why I didn't want to be a preacher. Because if it's Holy Communion, I knew by head the scripture which my pastor is going to open. I knew the words he's going to say. Then he's going to put fear in us and say, don't eat this Holy Communion if you're in sin. So why should I go to Holy Communion? I'm eating the same bread. I'm drinking the same grape juice. And I'm hearing the same words and I'm opening the same scripture. It's all a same routine. So my confusion is, what's the power of preaching when we are being told the stories of Moses? that I can read by myself. Why should I go to church and be told by someone else that Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal and fire came down? And then come back again and hear again that Elijah. It was so confusing. So I didn't want to be a preacher. Until I saw Bishop Noel Jones, Mega Fest 2004. That's 10, 20 years ago. 20 years ago, he was in Atlanta and he preached seven minutes, a message that changed my concept and my idea about preaching. I was just going to be saying, that says the Lord, because that was making sense to me. That you are coming to church to hear God is saying A, B, C, D. You are not coming to hear that Moses divided the Red Sea. That healing, deliverance, power, that was me. If I walk in your church and you're preaching, before I preach, I put on earphone. Because you're just going to tell me what I know. Well, what is going to change my life? To be told that a donkey spoke to the prophet. <laughs> I need money, I'm broke. <laughs> I'm hungry at home, there's no food. But I come here, and when I'm here, you going to be telling me that uh, and Adam ate the fruit of uh, good and life and he was kicked out of the garden. God bless you, go home. It wasn't making sense. But when I heard Bishop Noah Jones preaching now, uh, I said, this is what we call preaching. The other ones was waste of time, but this is life. This is giving people life. So I, I began to hear more of his messages and I began to build because uh, Bishop Noel John's concept on approaching God is always growing. He's always challenging himself from the things he believes. Because not everything that you were told growing up in church is true. It's not everything that they told you that is correct. You, you have to grow, that's my point. Because the Bible talks about the truth of this time. 
Meaning 20 years ago, it was not true yeah. to me, yeah. but it was true to my past. Yeah. Now that I have grown, it has become true now. now. So there is the truth of this now, yeah. the truth of this time, which is not true at the other time. I don't know if it makes sense to somebody. So as you are walking with me, I expect you to grow. Yeah. I expect you to grow. So uh, we have been eating, uh, fasting, uh, physical fasting every year. You don't eat your rice, your chick fil -A, your cho potle, your KFC. You don't eat all that McDonald's and stuff for 10 days, right? And then a few years ago, I believe three, four years ago, I introduced to the world what is called so fasting. I don't know how many of us said so fasting. Soul fasting is, is when your soul is not eating at all. It is when your soul is fasting. Soul fasting. The question now is, what is your soul? Your soul is the mind, the will, and the emotion. Right? Your mind is the... Your, your soul is the mind, the will, the emotion. That's the soul. The mind thinks. The will chooses. The emotion acts. So your soul makes you to think, to choose in order to act. That's the soul. What then is the spirit? Because this fasting we have just introduced now is the fasting of your spirit. And I'm going to be explaining to you how you're going to be successful in these 10 days of fasting, spirit fasting. Uh, before we talk about the fasting of the spirit, we need to understand what is the spirit. What is the spirit? The spirit is the mind of the spirit, which is different from the mind of the soul. And if you understand, uh, let me have two people with the takeover t-shirts. You, you don't have the t-shirt. Oh, yeah. How are you gonna be married if you are not on TV? <laughs> That's your, that's your advertisement moment. Nice one. Next time. So we have the soul, we have the spirit, right? The soul, the spirit. The soul is the mind, the will, the emotion. What is the spirit? The mind of the spirit. Intuition of the spirit. The inner gut. Discernment of spirit. And the fellowship of the spirit. So the spirit is the mind, the intuition, the fellowship. What is a soul? The mind of the soul, the will, and the emotion. You follow? What are the demarcations between the mind of the soul and the mind of the spirit? Because Ephesians tells you the mind of the spirit. The mind of the soul is the will. Uh, the mind of the soul is the choosing, is the thinking part. Right? That's where you find the carnal thoughts. Remember the Bible talks about a carnal mind. A carnal mind is the mind of the soul. But the mind of the spirit is what we call thoughts. When God says, my thoughts are far away from your thoughts, he's talking about my mind of my spirit. Is far away from the mind of your spirit. Let me break it down. When God created Adam and Eve, you grow to understand that God rested because Adam was representing God in the garden. Why? Because God created Adam in the image and the likeness of God. And the word image simply means representative. 
He is representing me. Right? Why? Because my thoughts and the thoughts of Adam are one. When I think of cleaning the garden, Adam starts cleaning. I don't need to tell him because telepathically we have the same mind. Right? But when Adam ate the fruit of knowing good and evil, he disconnected his spirit mind with God and unlocked the mind of his soul. So Adam is no longer walking in the spirit. He is now a solical human being operating carnally. So spirit thoughts, mind of the spirit, in it there is no fear. So Adam cannot drown in the water. Adam can be suspended in the air and sleep. He doesn't need a bed. Because the mind he has in the spirit is the same mind with an angel. If angels come down, they will be suspended in the air talking to you. So was Adam. But when he lost the mind of the spirit to operate with the carnal mind, he started facing force of gravity. He started sinking in the water. That's why a baby that is still developing a carnal mind, if you put a baby in the water, the baby doesn't sink. But when the mind of the baby is fully developed, and you put the same baby in the water, the baby will drown. What's drowning you is the mind of your soul. I wish I can talk to somebody. You follow? So it is the spirit now that the Bible says the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit fellowships with our spirit. It is the spirit mind which the Bible says, your spirit be a fourth witness with the Holy Spirit that you are a son of God. I don't know if you follow. It's not the mind of your soul. Your mind of your soul doesn't know that. Because the mind of your soul only operates from what is introduced to. That's why I don't have a struggle for the cravings for smoking. Because I have never introduced my mind to smoking. I have no struggle with appetite for alcohol because I have never tasted alcohol in my life. I have no struggle with the drugs because I have never touched drugs. I've never ate, what do you do with the drugs? Inject yourself or smell drugs. I have never done that. So my soul cannot crave for that because your soul is only going to crave to what you have introduced it to. The good and the bad, your soul is introduced to it to live by what you introduced it to. You follow? Yes. That's why if I give you a snake and you eat and say, mmm, delicious, then I say it's a snake, you are going to vomit. But if you give Al Jamal, I'm joking, she's not Asian. But if you give a Chinese a snake, and then you say, You just said and said, he's going to say thank you. But you are going to vomit. Let me go deep. If you give Charles, the Zimbabwean guy, a baboon meat, He's going to say thank you. Yeah, yeah. But if I gave Joanna baboon meat, she's going to say, Papa is a satanist. <laughs> because yes, so he has not been introduced to a baboon. That's why you are confused. Some people eat frogs. Some people eat snakes. Some people eat alligators. Some people eat dogs. Some people eat cats. I ate reds growing up. Reds. Delicious. I don't know if you follow. Because I was introduced to that 
and it became my meal. But if I give you a rate right now, you're not going to come back to this church. Because the mind cannot accept it. It's a carnal mind. It's only going to relate to what it's introduced to. But your spirit doesn't need introduction. Your spirit already know angels, already know demons, already know the anointing, already know Jesus, already know the Holy Spirit, already connects and relates with heaven. I, I, I don't know if you are here. So the Bible tells us something very important. Uh, fella, you can come now. She's worried about makeup because she's thinking makeup is going to give her a guy that likes her for makeup. <laughs> the guy is to like you the way you are. Yeah. Uh, is, she, is she not nice? Yeah. She not sweet? Yeah. Uh, so you are flesh. We have this soul. Okay, you go there. You come in between. So we come, come close. We have the spirit, we have the soul, and we have the, the body. Let's call it the body. Because actually the soul is the flesh. That's why it's not last of the body. It's last of the flesh. You are lasting in your mind. Yeah. But it's called the last of the flesh. Yeah. But this is your body. All right? So, uh, the spirit of Adam would fellowship with God. Because what starts is fellowship. Master that. The genesis of everything is the fellowship, right? So Adam would fellowship with God. When he fellowships with God, then his intuition will decide and divide. Was it God who appeared to you in the morning? Or was it the devil disguising to you as the angel of light? So whatever you fellowship, he has to be Descend in your spirit through your intuition. I don't know if you follow. Yeah. So if your fellowship is small, your intuition is also small. That's why you can walk with a demon-possessed boyfriend and sleep with a demon-possessed boyfriend without knowing he has a demon. Because you don't have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So your intuition cannot tell you this one is a bad man. Even if you see it, you won't believe it. That is a bad man. Because your intuition is off. What activates your intuition is the fellowship of your spirit. The more you fellowship, the more your intuition grows. And when the intuition grows, it then passes the fellowship information to your mind of your spirit. The mind of the spirit now directs it to the mind of the soul. Huh? The mind of the soul, when it thinks of what it has been given there, it now needs to will to do what has been said by the Holy Spirit. Because the, the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotion. The emotion is the action. Why do you cry? Because you have a soul. I don't know if you are there. Crying is in your soul. Your emotions make you cry. Your emotions make you happy. Your emotions make you sad. Do you follow? But when you are crying in your soul, tears, they come out from your body. When you are sad in your soul, your face grows so old when you are young. 
in your body. Have you ever seen people at 20 thinking they are 45? Always angry, always sad, always happy, because what's giving them heaviness is they have shut the fellowship of the spirit. Because once the fellowship of the spirit is blocked, there is a crave of fellowship within you. That's why you're fasting today. There is a crave of fellowship. Because you are desperate for a fellowship, you begin to fellowship with the demons that are telling you, watch pornography, watch pornography, watch pornography, watch pornography. You are fellowshipping with the demons that are saying, masturbate, 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 masturbate. You are fellowshipping with the demons that are saying, ah, he did this to you, you should not forgive him. He did this to you, he should pay. He did this, he should. Why? Because once the fellowship is cut off from the spirit, your spirit is void. Desperate. Open for any type of a fellowship. Ladies, understand better. Because they say, if my husband is not there for me, I don't want to go there. Someone else is going to talk to me. Because you are created to hear. So you want to hear something. Ladies are not here. Let, let, let me talk to some, somebody else online. Adam is created to see. That's why 10% of ladies watch pornography. But 98% of men watch pornography. Because men are created to see. But women are created to hear. That's why when Adam... Go up. What did Adam say? This is flesh of my flesh. You see, yeah. bone of my bone. Yeah. But the woman is only hearing and hearing. Yeah. Because women are created to hear. Men are created to see. Yeah. I don't know if you follow. Yeah. So if a woman is not hearing you are beautiful and another man comes to say you are beautiful, she's going to give him time. So the reason why you are finding yourself gossiping with other church people is because your spirit is no fellowship with the Holy Spirit and you are desperate for a fellowship. You are busy working in somebody's business because your spirit needs a fellowship. You are lacking the right fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You start fellowshipping with demons. Fellowship with the human beings that are too ugly with ugly news. So when bad news comes and rests into your soul, all you can produce physically is bad. That's why you're full of jealousy. Envious. That's why you are stingy. I don't want to lose this. Let me stop So, when you are fasting, spirit fasting, you go quiet in your body. Zip your mouth. There are three things we need to, to deal with here. She's waiting to speak. He is quiet. She is silent. Totally three different people. Some people are not silent. Some people are not quiet. When you are arguing with them, they are not listening to what you are saying. They are waiting for you to speak so they can speak. So if I'm talking to somebody that I see, this one is waiting for his turn. When he starts speaking, I say, wait, give me one minute. What did I say? Because I want to know, are you responding to what I'm saying? Or are you trying to win the argument? So my question will be, what did I say? Uh, um, whatever you say, but hear what I'm... Uh. Somebody is waiting to speak. That is why you're not hearing God. Because you want God to hear you.
That is why you are not growing spiritually. Because you have no time to listen. You just want to speak, 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 All the time, speak, 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 speak. I don't know if you follow. So many people, they don't even know what is to be quiet. They don't know what is to be silent. Every time they are speaking. That's why fasting of the spirit, you zip your mouth. And somebody will say, well, what am I going to do when I go home to my husband? What am I going to do when I'm with my kids? Oh, my boss at work, what am I going to do when I go to work? That tells you that you should only speak when it's necessary. Speak with everybody about work. Give me a pen, give me a book, do this, do this. We are working. But the moment they begin to gossip, just zip your mouth. The moment they begin to talk about politics, walk away. The moment they start talking about movie, the new Hunger Games, just walk away. Because you don't want to be in part of that fellowship. Do you know what's the reason why you are silencing yourself? Huh? Because when, when one sense is closed, it empowers other senses. You know that, right? You know that a, a, a blind man perceives better than you. If I give you $50 behind you, you won't know how much you're holding. But if you give a blind man any not, you tell you this is $10, this is $20, this is $50, because his senses are boosted somewhere. I don't know if you follow. So when you close your senses, when you close the ability to speak, you empower the ability of thoughts. Because in the eternity realm, we don't speak. Let me break it, down. break it down. Your flesh, your body lives on earth. Your soul is connected to the everlasting realm. Your spirit is connected to the eternity realm. The earth realm is moved by action. Don't just say you love me. Let me see it. That's what you say, right? Yeah. Don't just say, I love you, I love you. I want to see it. I want to feel it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you're on earth. The earth is moved by action. You follow? Yeah. But God is not like that. God calls you a thief before you steal. Yeah. The moment you are thinking of stealing, God says thief. Yeah. That's why David says, Against you, Lord, only you have I sinned. So that when you judge, you may be justified. Because if you judge that I'm an adulterer, people are going to say he has never done it. So I committed adultery so that when you judge, people may justify it's true. I don't know if you follow. So men see actions, but God says, if you look at a woman lustfully, you already committed adultery because I hear your thoughts. That's why you cannot hide from me. Because the moment you think, let me go under the table, I just said you. I don't know if you follow. So men wait until you hide. But to God, you can't hide because he's relating with your thoughts. That's why Daniel 10 verse 12 says, in the day you thought of praying, I answered you. How? I released the answer to the everlasting realm. Everlasting simply means there's a beginning, no end. Eternity, no beginning, no end. Earth, there's beginning and there's end. So God will release your answer into the everlasting realm. Wow. That means it has begun. But the angels are not moved by thoughts. Daniel 10 verse 12 says what? 
Angel Gabriel said, your words have made me come. You follow? Yes. Angels are moved by? By words. So, everlasting realm is, is moved by words. Earth is moved by action. So, for you to connect to God and start fellowshipping with God, like you should be fellowshipping with God, you need to be quiet on earth. You need to be silent. Shut your mouth. Don't speak any words. By so doing, your thoughts become active. So it's not that you are just silent. It is that you are communicating with heaven. You are walking, meditating. You are waking, meditating. You are going to sleep, meditating. You have no time to talk to people, but your thoughts are now talking with the Holy Spirit. You activate your relationship with the Holy Spirit from the thought level. Not from the brain level, but from the thought level. So when God is coming down to you, he doesn't need to say, Father! That's for angels. To go and say, Father, somebody's talking to you down there. You know your angels report, right? Yeah. For your angels to bring your report, you need to open your mouth. But eternity realm doesn't need you to open your mouth. In eternity, you think of a cake, it appears. Uh, that's why Philip was translated. He disappeared to appear in another city because he was now in the eternity realm. His thoughts were now powerful enough that he thinks to appear in California and he appears there. I don't know if you follow. So it's possible for you to walk on top of what? You just need to activate your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And your thoughts dominate more than your carnal mind. When the carnal mind is shut, then your spirit thoughts can make you do crazy things that you never thought you can do in life. God cannot use you unless you are spiritual. But for you to be spiritual, something got to die. Disconnect with the humans to connect with God. You sitting there, you already have seven boyfriends. You have more than enough fellowship. Some of you, you fellowship with your Instagram. Five hours you're scrolling. You know what I'm talking about. You're on TikTok. Six hours. So even if you are silent, even if you are waiting to speak, inside of your mind, you may be quiet physically, but you are still busy solically. You are wasting your time. You are busy on Facebook. You are busy on internet. You are wasting your time. Because God wants you to be silent. So you may be quiet. But you are still speaking. Have you ever been mad with your husband? That you ain't saying any word. Because you are showing him that you are mad. That means you are speaking. You are not silent. You are quiet. It is you get water, you get water, you just come and put it there. <laughs> am, am I being realistic with you? You are busy in your mind. Now he's seeing that I'm, I'm sad. I'm, he's seeing it. Now he knows that I'm not happy. He knows. <laughs> he, he should learn that he mustn't do this again. You, you are not silent, you are quiet. But you are speaking in another language. <laughs> Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. <laughs> but if your husband messes you up, 
Your wife messes you up. And you are not quiet, but you are silent. What you are dealing now is you are now dealing with the spirit that has walked in your house. You know, when, well, let, let me tell you something. When the spirit of masturbation comes in your house, right? It doesn't say you masturbate. It makes your husband go off. I don't know if you follow. If he goes off, then you are disconnected. When you are disconnected, then you feel lonely. When you feel lonely, you now need to fellowship sexually somewhere. But you know you can't be with another man. Because if he catches you. <laughs> so the only man you're going to be with is the man in the pornography. And you are sitting there saying, I never cheat my husband. You're already cheating on pornography. When you do the pornography, then you start masturbating by yourself. When he comes back home, you are full, you already ate. But he is hungry. So the distance keeps going because you have entertained the demons that are fellowshipping with you. So many people, God is about to restore your relationship. But this is what God is saying. If your phone, your phone, I have two phones. I have two. Because I'm too blessed to call myself. Okay, I have called myself. You know, when you are blessed, you live in a double portion. Uh, I, bought, I, bought, I bought a mansion. I bought a mansion. But you know, church people always come into my house. So I, I, I start building another mansion to join to my mansion. So when I get up in the morning, I say, good morning, neighbor. <laughs> then I run to my other house. And I say, I'm Gucci. <laughs> so when I want to fellowship with myself, I have to call myself. <laughs> Hello? Hello. <laughs> Hello. It's not working. My mouthpiece is not working. My mouthpiece is shut because my phone is doing spirit fasting. So what do I do when my phone is mute? When my mouthpiece is not working, if I can hear myself. If I call you direct, I can hear. If I call on WhatsApp, I can't hear. What do I do? I restart the phone. I switch it off. So that when I switch it on, I can start here clearly. Yes. So what you are doing in this soul fasting, spirit fasting, is that you are muting yourself to restart. Wow. To reboost. A fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are restarting a journey with God. Yes. I wish I knew this 20 years ago. My life would have been better. Yes. You now need to understand that you have been glued to anger because you had wrong fellowship. Yes. And forgiveness because you were in wrong fellowship. Yes. Bitterness because of wrong fellowship. You are not happy in your life because you are fellowshipping with the demons that keep reminding you he cheated on you, he cheated on you, he cheated on you, he cheated. So you keep feeding that fellowship. So even though you are still with him in that marriage, you are no longer with him. Because your thoughts and his thoughts are no longer the same. The only thing you can talk about is something that has to do with bills, something that has to do with kids. But there's nothing else you can communicate. Why? Because your fellowship with demons have entertained your marriage. Wow. That there's nothing more left in your house than relating because of kids. Relating because of work. But rather than work and kids, there's nothing else you can talk about. Because you have entertained demons because somebody made a mistake. I don't know if you follow. 
So when you are silent now, you are disconnecting that type of fellowship with demons. You are developing fellowship with the spirit of anger, with the demon of, of, of unforgiveness. Because God says in 2024, joy is yours. Peace is yours. But you cannot find peace unless you fellowship in the right fellowship. I don't know if you follow. So, your thoughts, your spirit, is divided in three dimensions. That's for tomorrow. Because God, because God is one. But when he is fellowshipping, he doesn't fellowship with the devil. He doesn't fellowship with Angel Michael. He fellowships with himself. Yeah. Let us create men in our own image. He's all by himself. But he's talking to himself. So I'm going to be teaching you tomorrow. The power of the third dimension of your thoughts. Yeah. It's a dimension that can make you so powerful. Because one dimension perceives. You can see past, present, and future. The other dimension walks. Mm -hmm. You can walk in your past, present, you can walk in your future. Mm -hmm. you, it's too big for you. Uh, digest this one. Tomorrow then we, God bless you. Tomorrow then we are going to deal with the three dimensions of your spirit. So today as, as, as you are fasting, number one, don't open your mouth. Unless it's necessary. I can open my mouth the whole day praying. Huh? I can open my mouth to pray. I can open my mouth when my husband is in the house. That means if he wants some sex, I'm available. The Bible says the bed is undefiled. So I can say A, B, C, D, E, F, husband. Because, <laughs> because the bed is undefiled. It is on the soul fasting where you don't have sex. But in the spirit fasting, just make sure you speak when it's necessary. So sexual talk in bed is necessary. It's needed. You speak. Uh, let your kids do their daily routine. Let them get up in the morning. Let them eat their breakfast. Let them go to school. Don't start talking about cartoons with your kids and stuff. Uh, talk when it's necessary. Talk to your boss. Good morning, boss. Ba 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 mom at work when it's necessary. But always find yourself. The Bible says, be quick to hear. Be slow to speak. I don't know if you understand. So make sure you are silent at all times. And God is going to bless you. Any questions before I pray? Basia. Thank you, Papa. That was really amazing, mind blowing. It was deep. Yes, Super very deep. deep. Super deep. Scuba dive. Yes. <laughs> I've got a question um, about how best to disconnect yourself if you if your mind does get active with that wrong fellowship. Let's say you might be upset about something, and the mind goes into overthinking about this. So how best to actually silence that to fellowship in a right way it's just just convince yourself it's not real it's not real i want two people to come two people a man and a woman adam is naked as you can see and Eve is naked, as you can see. Whatever was coming in their thoughts was real. You follow? But whatever was happening carnally was not real. So they were naked and they were not ashamed. Because there was no reality of being naked to them. I, I don't know if I make sense. Yeah, you can come. I don't know if I make sense to you. 
but when he sinned, the dreams which are in his thoughts became unreal. You're not hearing me? I am saying, if you see yourself preaching in your dream, it was a dream. If you see millions in your dream, it's just a dream. I don't know if you fall. It's just what? It's just a dream. Why? Because you live in your carnal mind, not in your spirit mind. So whatever God is giving you spiritually, which is real in the spirit, to you is unreal. But what is happening physically to you is real. So let me give you an example to answer you. If your brother comes and clap you for no reason in a dream, you get up smiling and say, do you know what you were doing to me in the dream? You were actually slapping me. You have no problem with your brother. Why? It's not real. If he clips you physically, you are going to say, you don't know me. <laughs> Why? Because it's real to you. Reality is based on what you are convinced at. If you are convinced that you have seen yourself preaching and you shall preach, then that dream is your reality. So the reason why you are angry is because you are in your carnal mind. So you have been pained because it's real to you that he says you're a prostitute. But you have never prostituted. Why are you having a problem with somebody calling you a prostitute? Because you are too carnal to be convinced by carnal words. So I, I, I can't be mad because somebody called me a prostitute. I don't know if you follow. So when God is coming to you, he wants you to have spiritual realm as real, as reality, as real, to the extent that it is your reality, conviction of your spirit, that makes your angel to be physical. That is why you understand that Jacob is fighting physically with an angel because spiritually he's convinced that this is a real angel. But you see angels, you are still doubting. Was it my mind? Was it me thinking? You are speaking in tongues. You're like, is it me just saying cha 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 cha? Is it really God? You don't have reality of your spiritual world. You are convinced of your physical world. So when somebody angers you, you entertain the thought of being angered because you are believing in physical things more than spiritual things. I am carnal. I am carnal, sold under sea, says Paul in Romans 7. I will to do what is good. I find myself doing what is bad. Oh, wretched men that I am, who shall deliver me from this bondage of sin? In conclusion, I shall save God with the law of my body, and I shall save God with the law of the spirit. I don't know if you follow. So there are people that are here that needs to understand whatever you are going through is not real. It's just the shadow of the value of death. But the devil makes it real because the more you are communicating and fellowshipping with that demon, with that situation, in that place, the more you are going to be angry. The more you are going to be unhappy. Why would you entertain a demon that makes you unhappy? When somebody wrongs you, it's not that person. There's a demon behind the scenes. I saw a lady crying because somebody lost wrestling. I saw my sister crying when Titanic was uh, taking place. I don't know how many people cried because of Titanic. They are saying, cut, cut. You didn't do, re redo that. Cut. And you are crying. Mm, mm, mm. It's not real. But you have convinced yourself that what I'm watching on Titanic is real. <laughs> Life will go on. Another question. 
Someone said, uh, uh, it's not allowed in fasting. I'm joking. Yes. Thank you for this wonderful teaching. What's your name? I've never met you. Uh, my name is Latara, Dr. Latara Demps. I actually was um, talking with Pastor Wallace before I came here. You are in the triple C group? No, I wasn't. Uh, why? I need to be. You have to. I have so to. I'm raising ladies all over the world, especially in America, that are going to be preaching, prophesying, casting Amen. out demons, and planting churches. Amen. Women of valor, the prophetesses of our generation. So everyone has to be in that group. I will be. <laughs> if you're not in that group and you're watching, go on the website, Prophet Passion, join the Triple C group. Amen. Yes, woman of God. So my question is, as we're on this spiritual fast, how do we best engage fellowship? Is it by us trying to initiate fellowship with the Holy Spirit, or should we be silent and trying to allow the Holy Spirit to initiate fellowship with us? Do you know that right now Michael Jackson is playing? Yes. Yes. Michael Jackson's song is playing. Yes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's playing. But what you now need to do is to go on YouTube and press play. It's already there. So the Holy Spirit is already fellowshipping with your spirit. But your spirit is shut the door. I don't know if you follow. Already shut the door. And because the door is shut, you cannot hear the Holy Spirit. So in fellowship, the Holy Spirit has to start or you have to start. So you can choose a topic to communicate with the Holy Spirit. Those in my triple C group, I already taught you how to meditate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one of the days during the fasting, I'm going to teach people how to meditate. But you have to, the more you are quiet, the more topics are going to become. The more fellowship is going to come. The more uh, visualization is going to be taking place. Visualizing heaven, um, seeing angels. Uh, seeing yourself being used by God, all those things, they start forming and building the more you're quiet. You are silent to empower your thoughts and your thoughts begins to give you what is already in the atmosphere. The visions you are looking for, they are not coming to you. They're already waiting in the atmosphere. Anything, the dreams are in the atmosphere, but you decide what to dream. If you are last for your dream, last for dreams. If you are not faithful, you dream those type of dreams. So whatever you are looking for is already there spiritually. It's already there spiritually. Where is the lady that's supposed to leave? She left. I was about to prophesy. Because I was seeing a rose when she was sitting there, like a flower. So I was about to start, but... Um, you may miss your flight if you don't go. So we 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 understand. Let, let, let me find who I can give an example. It's just it's, it's just an example. It's, it's, it's just an example. Now you see this young man seated there. God is going to use him. Prophecy does not create. Prophecy does not create, it reveals. If I switch off the light, you won't see the speaker. When I switch on the light, you see the speaker. Light did not create the speaker. Light revealed the speaker that was already there. So I'm already seeing God using him in the near future. I'm seeing God using him because there was a dedication of this young man. Long time ago. I don't know if it's Jamaica or it's it's America. I dedicated him to the Lord. When he just when he was born, I gave him back to the Lord. You prayed the prayer yes. for Hannah. Yes. And the prayer you made is God, he is not my child. Yes, Papa, the exact words. He is your child. Yes, Papa. As you used Samuel, use him. Yes, Papa, and the exact said, words. God, I would want to name him, but I want you. To name him. Yes. And God directed you to a prophet. That's why I saw a name like a Nathan. Nathan is his name, Papa. Is his name. Yes. Yes. 
Yes, Papa. Says, because of the covenant that was made, yes, Papa. Dedicating him, he is going to use this young man in a mighty way. Yes, Papa. Move is going to come. Yes, Papa. I lifted him up as a baby. Yes, Papa. God bless you. Thank now, you. Now, 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 this prophecy is in the spiritual realm. I don't know if, I, if we follow. Yeah. Is where? In the spirit. So I just need to connect there. And review what is already there. Prophecy does not create. Prophecy reveals. Uh, I don't know if I'm talking this way. Another question? Yes. Um, if someone uh, used to I think... Uh, negative thought a long time and convinced uh, he, his or her heart uh, that's reality but uh, this is a lie and uh, for and how to how to um, how to change it if so she's speaking mm -hmm. polish english sorry Right. I don't know <laughs> how I to explain believe, it. I just, uh, I just, I, I mean, okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, you once it, you, you there's someone who once had an experience where somebody spoke bad, 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 bad. bad. I mean, um, when speaking for, police. Allegedly. Okay, no, I will, I will tell, I will tell you about myself. So I just was, I just unfortunately used to to uh, think bad, negative thoughts a long time, and I, and. Uh, I have this feeling that I convinced myself that the lie is true, and now I'm just wondering how to how to go out from this from this and to just to to convince my heart that it's that these thoughts are lies and not true. You're because saying you I, were telling yourself and convincing yourself about something that was not true. Now you want to convince yourself about something that is true. That I would like to convince my heart that, 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 that the lie is lie and not. She would like to reverse what she had thought. So she had thought negative thoughts, and she now believes, or she believed those negative thoughts, and she wants so to reverse it. So your thoughts has become a reality. Yes, to her. Uh -huh. Yes. So we are saying the thoughts have become a reality. Yes. How to make them unreal? Yes. That's the question, Basia. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. It's it, it's simple. It's simple. Uh, I grew up Panganai Java. Java is my real last name. My real from my father last first name was Panganai. It was too off for me because I'm international. You can't call me Prophet Panganai. <laughs> you can't do that. So, because it was not real, I called myself Peterson. I called myself Peterson. But then there was another Peterson where I was, so I called myself Brighton. But the Brighton wasn't that good because it gave me too many memories that were not good because I wanted to be used by God, but at the same time, I wanted to feel how it is to work for somebody. So when I was working in South Africa, they were calling me Brighton. And the angel of the Lord appeared to me and spoke to me and told me, uh, go back to Zimbabwe, start my church right now. So I quit everything, packed my bags, went back to Zimbabwe. Now I am called Passion Java. It's no longer real that I'm Panganaya. It's not real. What made me not to have the reality of what was real to me is what I have given myself. For example, if I am real to myself that I'm a prostitute, I cannot just say I'm, I'm just going to quit and convince myself that I'm not a prostitute. I have to occupy myself as a prophetess, as a preacher, to convince myself that I'm a preacher. Once I convince myself that I'm a preacher, the reality of being a prostitute becomes unreal. So I don't have to focus on what I was believing. I have to focus on believing what I never believed. Because in order to learn, you have to unlearn yourself. But you unlearn yourself by what you are learning. Mm, amen. 
what makes you say he is wrong is what you have been taught. If I say this phone is pink, you will laugh. Because you have been told it's black. But is it real that it's black? It's not real. But it has become real because you have been convinced. And now that you believe what you have been convinced, you now need to understand that unless you are told it's pink and everybody believes it's pink, then it's going to be pink. I don't know if you understand. So occupy yourself with something you never occupied yourself with. Tell yourself something you never told yourself. Then eventually what you were convinced about is going to leave you. Amen. Another question. Another question. Draw me. Uh -huh. Thank you, Papa, for the spiritual food. Uh, as usual, it's rich uh, and very spicy. Well, where do you buy your clothes? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, that's, this one uh, and the green one is deep. Uh, um, What's the question? Okay. Um, I can tell you in private. So uh, the question is, when you're speaking about this, this uh, spiritual fasting, when, when we think about the scripture where Paul says, you know, he's no longer him, but it's Jesus, Christ. it's Christ. And when we yearn to live and walk in the spirit, and you're yearning for that and you want to lose self, this is the path then where we exercise that spiritual muscle you're, you're talking about in the spiritual fasting that that then leads us, guides us to that place where we're constantly walking, living in the spirit. Oh, that one now, it, it, it comes when we are doing the soul fasting. Ah. Because Paul says, I die every day. Ah. What's dying every day is not your spirit. What's ah. dying every day is your soul. Got it. Ah. The reason why, the reason why you are in a fight is because you are still alive. The reason why you are seeking revenge is because you are still alive. You are still saying me, me, it's me. You can't do that to me. Why would you do that? Me. You don't know me. It's still me, me, me. But God says, if you love me, deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow me. What was being nailed on the cross was not the spirit of Jesus, was not the body of Jesus, was the soul of Jesus. Jesus. That is why when you are having sex with somebody, you look at their body and you like the body. But when you are sleeping body to body, it's your soul that's having sex, not your body. Wow. It's your soul. That's why you sleep with someone and you end up not with a body tie, but with your soul tie. So what's being crucified is your soul. That is why Jesus says, I have the power to stop the cross. I can tell angels, 12, 000, 12 legions of, 12,000 of angels, uh, 12 legions of angels to come and destroy everybody. Because part of him wants, but part of him does not want. That's why that, when he was praying, what did he say? What did he say? He says, not my will. He says, Father, let this cup pass, but nevertheless, not my will. Meaning his will didn't want to die. But your will. I don't know if you understand. Now, when we say your will, we are now saying Jesus Christ. In fact, not Jesus. Christ liveth in me because I have died to self, but Christ have taken over myself. I don't know if you understand. So when we deal with the soul fasting, that's when we get there, where somebody have to die daily. What do you want to do daily? You want sex. You want entertainment. You want to enjoy. I don't know if you understand. There's a scripture that's very important. I don't know if I can pull it up.
I will try to get it tomorrow. But it talks about sacrificing yourself. I think it says it says uh, uh, it benefits a man if he is silent or if he is quiet, uh, that he may gain life. Life. That he may gain life. It's a scripture like that. Maybe if we can go, it can be faster. Glory to Jesus. As I'm looking for the scripture, I can have uh, the other question. Uh, can only say you're too deep. <laughs> too deep. My question, I'm wondering, because even if I'm silent or something, I have this, this um, thought of guilt. Or, so for, this came from God, and just bothered that I that the right thing. Constantly reminded me of vision and of um, guilt of things I haven't done in the past that should have been and are not today because I didn't do the, the, those things. So I'm just wondering how to get rid of those because I'm always fighting with those inside of me that guilt, those thoughts that are the opportunity I squandered. Sorry, I was, I was, uh, I was disturbed. Sorry. What did you say again? Okay, I started saying that I think you're too deep, too deep since yes, so that's what that's what too I can deep. say. Too deep, too deep. Serious. <laughs> I thought I was being normal. <laughs> it's too deep, but good. <laughs> so I, I, I'm wondering because I, what I'm struggling with is always those thoughts of uh, and the guilt that I see the opportunity that God gave me and I squander them. And I keep on seeing these visions and I can't shake them off. And I'm trying to say, hey, this is done in the past, the mistakes I'm here today. It wasn't God's plan. He had something more but because I made the choices I made today. I'm here today or... I'm not having those opportunities because the choices I made. So I have that guilt that constantly, I'm trying to shake them off so I can actually move forward, but I, I feel like I'm kind of just held by that. Can someone tell me in short what, what's being said? It's, it's, Papa, it sounds like what she's saying is that she's dealing with guilt because of past opportunities because that she's missed. Uh -huh. So she's trying to figure out how to overcome that guilt to move forward. Understand yourself in Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse number 1. Romans 8, verse number 1. Romans 8, verse number 1. Hmm. Uh, I have a teaching. Uh, did you guys upload a teaching I did? Uh, what happens to babies after abortion? Please upload it today. Romans 8, verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit so of life. So God is saying, don't be condemning yourself. Because what's going to happen is, what keeps you in that guilty is the constant fellowship with the spirit, demons. Because the spirit of God does not condemn, it convinces. But demons, they don't convince, they condemn. But when you're accepting that voice to condemn, you know what you're saying? Jesus already forgave you. Washed you under the blood of Jesus. Your sins are buried and forgotten under the blood of Jesus. But when you condemn yourself, you are saying, God, the blood of Jesus is not enough for what I did. You are actually mocking God when you're condemning yourself. You feel God is going to feel sorry and really forgive you because you are condemning yourself. You don't know you are grieving the Holy Spirit. Because God already said, I died for you on the cross. I shed my blood for you on the cross. But after I died and forgave your sins before you sinned, you keep bringing back the sin I died for. What's the purpose of Jesus dying on the cross if you condemn yourself? You say, I have not forgiven myself. But God forgave you before you sinned. I don't know if I make sense to somebody. So God says there's no condemnation to the children of God because we are not sinners. You can say, Father, forgive me, I'm a sinner. No, you commit sins, yes. But you are not a sinner. 
You stole yesterday, but you're not a thief. The Bible says drunkards will not enter the kingdom of heaven, right? Or inherit, however we can call it. But you guys drink to have sex with your husbands. You are not a drunkard. Uh, it's another topic. As it's confusing. <laughs> so God is saying the only way to move forward is to forgive yourself only by knowing that God forgave you and he saw your sin. That's why he was born as a human being. That's why he was nailed on the cross because he saw you in sin. Yeah, yeah. Then he forgave you before you were in your mother's womb. That's why he called you knowing what you are going to do, good and bad. And he is still with you in his presence. But you are not with him because you feel sin like you have wronged him so bad. So God says, forgive yourself. Uh, the husband was uh, having a threesome. And came back home and found a wife sleeping with another man. You know, men are not fair. <laughs> but then went for counseling and he confessed his sins. If you call them sins. And he was told, she slept with one, you slept with two. That means forgive her twice. So the man walked back home and forgave the wife and became loving and sweet. But the wife yanged herself because she mistaken his forgiveness as if he's planning evil that he's not aware of, she's not aware of. Some of you, you are choking yourself because you believe God is sweet to you because he want to take you to hell. You don't know you are sending yourself to hell by what you are convincing yourself in. After 10 days of spirit fasting, you will be out of this condemnation. Because you are going to have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The closer you go to the Holy Spirit, the more you know he has forgiven you. The more you find the peace with him. The more you find the joy in the Holy Ghost. But the moment you are far away from him, demons will catch you there. So forgive yourself because you are already forgiven. Yes. Papa, last I, three questions and we close. Yes. I had um, in my life used to have a photographic memory and I kind of misplaced it because it got me in trouble with my siblings being, um, being you know, always knowing stuff. So now that I'm um, in the Lord, I've spent a time of silence for a long time, for years. And um, I want to know during this fast, how can I meditate on regaining my elephant memory or my photographic memory? I'm not getting the memory part. I really just want to know about, you spoke, you taught us about elephant memory. Elephant um, memory. Yes. Like and, the most intelligent memory in the world. Yes. And, and how, and in like. Animal world. And photographic memory I used to have. I want to try to restore that during this um, fasting time through meditation, and wondered if you had any idea of what I could do. I can teach better when I talk about med uh, meditation, but the simply if you want to not forget things, if you want to capture things in your mind, don't just think it, picture it. But for you to picture it, you have to write it. Okay. You okay. have a dream, write it and read it. Read it and read it and throw apart the paper. You will always have that dream until you die. So when you are writing, you are putting it in you. When you are reading, you are putting it in you. Then you don't need to read again. It's now in you. But I will teach better when I teach about meditation. Yes.
Question about the spirit. So you said when God fellowships, he fellowships with himself. So he's fellowship, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit in you. Is that correct? And then I kind of... Um, uh, if I hear you call lecture, that's tomorrow's teaching. Okay. Uh, because God is, is one, but in his uh, mind of the spirit, he is three. He is the spirit of God. He is the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Ghost. Which is tomorrow's teaching. And then one God deeper. Question. More question, if you can help me understand. So if we have like the Holy Spirit in us, you say like you have the spirit of Elijah, you have, they, they talk to each other too. How, how does it work when you have like multiple spirits? So if you have the Holy Spirit and then the spirit of Elijah, they work together? Simple. I'll teach you tomorrow, but, but I will tell you this today. I am a legion. We are many. How many is three months? 6,000. Why? Because a man, what is a man? A man is a spirit that possesses a soul. So a soul is a place that houses spirits. So when demons are coming, they are coming to possess your, your soul because they want to take over your will so that you may act according to what they decide. I don't know if you follow. So in your soul, you can have 6,000 demons. But in your soul, God says, you are a temple and the Holy Spirit lives in you. Not alone, even with angels. The Bible says you are a city. Not a village, you are a city. Right? You can house a lot. The Bible says, what a man benefit if he loses his soul to gain the world? That means the soul is compared to the size of the world. That's how your soul is big. So your soul can have your auntie's spirit, can have your, your grand-grandfather's demons. It's another teaching for another day. But, but understand that your soul is too big enough to house a lot of things. It's just that Jesus cannot cohabit with demons. But your soul is too big enough to accommodate a lot. That's why they said, some say you are Jeremiah, some say you are John, some say you are Isaiah, some say you are this and that. Because you can actually house a lot within your soul. So tomorrow, it's going to be interesting. Yes? Papa, I have a question. Yes. What's uh, the level of the state of, uh, of a mind and a fellowship that uh, you are operating, that you are working on, that I'm you keep, you. I mean, what the level of fellowship that you have in a daily life, that uh, haters, people hate you, call your name, but it doesn't move you, you keep continue preaching, and you are a prophet, you can call fire, you can cast them like, Elisha called the mama bears, cussed them, the mama bears showed up. So, and you just have fun, you just continue. I mean, I know I'm a preacher myself, but you know, you don't freak out stuff. You know, some preacher go, you know, face to face, you know, face to face. So, I just want to know that the level, how you, how you, your day routine, like, you just peaceful. I'm trying to understand. I think you are saying, uh, what's your level of meditation? That allows you not to be moved by what people say. Yeah. Uh, it's simple. It's simple. Uh, uh, it's simple. It's simple. Uh, if it was a class, I would have teach better. Because you actually have to train yourself to be there. Mm. You guys, when you pray, you see, you, you play hallelujah. I, 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 I play destructive music. Yeah. I was running with Isen Boat in 2015 in, in Jamaica. And when he was training, I was there with him training. And he was putting a big belt, chain, and some tire, you know, car tires. And he would pull it. So I said, how can I apply this in my assignment? 
Then I said, when I pray, I need to pray like this. When I preach, I need to preach like this. So when I was preaching now, I would tell everybody, don't say amen. So I teach myself to preach without anybody saying, amen, that's deep. So that when I come and preach to people that are in church, that are saying amen, I will kill it far better. I don't know if you understand. So I started saying when I am praying or when I'm worshiping, I'm not going to play worship music. I'm going to play something distracting and see if I can still pray and hear God in the distraction. Some of my sons now, I said, I'm going to train you. But you have to choose if you want me to train you as a man of God. Or you want me to train you as a warrior. Amen. So if they say I want to be a warrior, I call somebody to call and say, man of God, my friend, give me your number. I'm going through miscarriage right now. Pray for me. What is God saying? That says the Lord. It's a witch. <laughs> but nobody's pregnant. I would have given more examples, but it's public. But I've teached them so bad to make them so strong. Let me give you one example. Before I sent team to Atlanta, we went to Dubai. And when we went to Dubai, I took three girls and I told them, go after that guy. This is 1,000 dirham. How much is it in dollars? $300. Just for you to connect with this guy. No sex, no love, no relationship. Just connect with him, entertain him. Let's see his reaction. If you take his number, if you talk to him, you show me chats, I'll give you another thousand dollars. So Tim doesn't know I'm setting him up. So I said, I left something upstairs. Wait here on the reception. I'm out. I'm waiting for chats so I can pay them more. But Tim is Tim, you know Tim. He passed the test. I, I know. Have you ever walked in love with church? Have you ever seen beautiful girls in the church? Very attractive ladies. There's a mixture of beautiful girls, attractive girls, sexy girls. Even ugly ones are there. If you have not been raised as a warrior, you are going to fall. It's automatic. It's automatic. You are going to fall. We are human beings. Who doesn't like things here? Everybody needs some nice. I want some nice. Everybody wants nice. I can fall next year. I'm human. Uh, you don't want me to be real? Okay, you can fall in five years to come. You are real. You are a human being. But because of the trainings that you go through before you are announced, you are strong enough to handle whatever comes your way. I, I, I don't know if you understand. I've met him to lose $20,000, which he was budgeting to, to, to build, uh, to buy a house for himself. Jayo knows. Adabla knows the story. And I loved it too. I'm training him to understand that you don't need to be moved by money. I don't know if you understand. Sometimes we, we see, uh, let me not use the word ugly. Sometimes we see a woman that is really out, far away from beauty. <laughs> and I say, imagine if somebody gives you $10 million to have that woman as your wife. Then you see the reaction, then you know. This one is not moved by money. So you test somebody step by step. You make someone go through some stuff step by step until you cannot. This one might fall because he's human, but he's strong enough to handle anything in front of you. I don't know if you understand. So uh, it's very important that me, myself, I had nobody to teach me to be strong. 
but through revelation, I began to stretch myself and teaching myself to become strong. The first time I was in the newspapers, there were everyone was attacking me in the in the nation, the the politicians, the entertainers, the preachers, the head of all pastors in Zimbabwe. They were saying, "There's nothing like that. This guy is a witch. There's no prophet like that. That's not God speaking to him." The title, if you can Google it, it was written, uh, the only prophet who can prophesy your ID number. Because I was doing that. Uh, I couldn't leave the house. Ah, I was shy. People look at me, I'm this witch that being announced all over the nation. But the following day, one of my son called me and said, Papa, the church is extra pegged. Our instruments were just for 300 people. We had over 1,500 people that came to church. That's when I introduced demonstration of power because I couldn't preach. There was no enough instruments for me to preach. So I just said to power, power, and things started happening and the church kept on growing. So they wrote me again, it was bad. And the church doubled again. So I, in my confession, I ended up paying people to write bad stuff about me. Because I saw that it was working. Then I learned to understand that people love bad stuff. They don't like good stuff. When they hear there's a true prophet, it's not going to make news. When they hear false prophet, it's going to make news. So when I see the people that are saying, he's fake, I'm happy because I know you're preaching about me on your pulpit to the people that don't know me instead of preaching Jesus Christ. So... You're my employee without me paying you. Why should I care? So once you know who you are in Christ, you are not moved by what people say. If you know you are a woman of God and somebody say you are a murderer, you can't cry because you know you're not. I don't know if you understand. The only thing that moves you is when people tell you what you are not and you actually don't know if you are that or not, then you're in trouble. So when you were a baby, somebody says, uh, son of, you would get in a fight. Because you say, my mother is not like that. Eh? But growing up and somebody says the same thing, you just laugh. So when you are a baby, you are moved by that stuff. But when you grow up, you don't need to be moved by stuff like that. I found the verse that says, the one, uh, Proverbs 8 in verse 3. I don't know who needed that verse. I don't know, someone. The one who guides his mouth protects his life. The one who opens his lips invites his own ruin. That means when you are quiet, you are building your life. Some people, they don't have life. They are just living. But for you to buy life, you have to be quiet. Then you can enjoy life. Uh, last question. Last two. Okay, last Greetings question. to honor uh, Grandpa Passion. Um, I want to say uh, that you said something about Michigan before. Just please don't forget us. Huh? Michigan. You Michigan. said something about coming to Michigan before. Like in the past, please don't forget us. Because I'm from Michigan. Oh, you are from Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my daughter from Michigan? I can't see you. Yeah. Yeah. You should connect with that one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my question is why So I'm coming to Michigan. Uh, Thank you. that is uh the Bishop Jackson of Impact TV. He has been wanting me there. It's been years now. We almost went to Michigan this year. Okay. But then uh, he invited my father, Bishop John. So that was the only day open. So we failed. But I'm coming. Well, thank you. Yes. Um, my question is, why is it when you're fasting, um, demons are attracted or the problems come so fast? Of course, when you're fasting, what happens is when you're fasting, you, you uh, remember the devil is a snake. So it's a spiritual world. He's not a snake. But spiritually, he's seen, regarded as a snake. Right? Your intense signs are also shaped like a snake. Yeah. Meaning your intense signs are the pathway of the devil. Mm -hmm. 
So when you're fasting, you're blocking the path of the devil. So every devil in you manifest. Because you've blocked the path for them. So they will show up. Number two, when you're fasting, you attract demons because fasting is not complete without demons. Luke chapter 4, if I'm not mistaken. It says, when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, the Spirit of God led Jesus to a wilderness to what? To be tempted by the devil and to fast for 40 days. There is no fasting without temptation. And God does not tempt you. God can test you, not tempt you. Only demons can test you. That's why when you who tempt you, that's why the Bible says when you pray, say, lead me not into temptation. Who leads you into a temptation? The Holy Spirit. Who leads you to the devil? The Holy Spirit. Oh, read, read, read the scripture. Uh, when Jesus was led by, by the Spirit to the wilderness. So, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God is saying, pray that you are not led by who? By God. Into a temptation. So, God leads you into a fasting, meaning he is also leading you into a temptation. That's why you are going to be tempted like never before. But after the temptation, when you finish your fasting, you have the greatest spiritual warfare like never before. Because demons are now scared of you, so they will try to stop you. They want to exchange all the power that you gathered through fasting. They want to take it from you. So how does the devil take he understands that you can never take anything spiritual from a man without an exchange with something physical. That's why the woman of Babel were exchanging human souls with sex. Revelations chapter number 18. And Jesus fasted 40 days and nights. And what did the devil say? After 40 days and fasting, Jesus was hungry. And the tempter said, change the stone to become bread. He's saying, I'm giving you physical stones. Right? But spiritually, make me the bread of life. I'll give you kingdoms. But spiritually, let people worship God through me, not through you. God, the devil wants to exchange. So you'll bring you something to connect with you in order to take. Because you can never collect unless you connect. So demons will bring you a person to connect with in order to collect the power that you gather through fasting. That is why you go through your after fasting. Amen. What does the scripture say? Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Yeah. It reads, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned yeah. from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. For 40 days he was being tempted. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Go back to verse 1. Verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit he into the wilderness. He was led by who? The Spirit. To? The wilderness. Uh-huh. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. To be tempted and to fast for 40 days, if you read King James Version. So the Spirit leads you into temptation. There is no temptation that the Holy Spirit will not allow, that you cannot pass. That's why God says, the Bible says, you cannot be tempted above that which you don't have power over. So God already knows he has given you power before you are tempted. So falling is your own choice. Why did God you allow me to be there? He didn't allow you. He gave you power to overcome. But you made a choice. You made a choice. Father, I pray for everybody in here. Let them be blessed. Let them be favored. And I pray that they are established. And I pray that they prosper this year. Help them not to speak, 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 speak. But as your word says, be quick to hear and be slow to speak, I pray, that you enable your people not to speak, 
but to fellowship with you in their spirit. Teach them by your anointing what is meditation, what is fellowship, that they may relate and have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I bless them and I bless their path. I bless them. I bless their future. I bless them and I establish them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless everybody who is here. Uh, this is what you do when you're fasting. When you get up in the morning, tell God what you're doing the whole day. Give an offering for the day. Don't wait for our live sessions. Give your own revelational offering that God reveals to you. Don't speak to anybody the whole day, unless it's needed or it's necessary for you to speak, then you speak for 10 days. While you are quiet, meditate. You are going to see that the moment you are not speaking, the more the atmosphere is going to be increasing in your life, the more you're going to be growing closer to God, the more you're going to be connecting more with God. I wish the whole church at the body of Christ worldwide would fast spirit fasting and see the results of it. I love you all with the love of Jesus Christ. God bless you until then. Keep on keeping on and God shall take you higher and higher. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And God bless you.